Hey everybody and welcome to Arcade 92 again. Uh, so it's almost time for a walkthrough video, but I'm not going to do that today. We actually got a couple machines about to be swapped out. So just know that a walkthrough video with our uplit, updated games list uh, is going to be coming soon. Uh, but one recent change that we had is uh, this guy right here. Uh, so behind me, uh, we have these two machines together. They totally belong together. Uh, they're products of movies from the early 80s uh, that became video games. Uh, so they are, they are uh, Tron as well as Star Wars are just key moments uh, in 80s culture and you know culture that we still see today with a Tron movie being made, uh, remade uh, relatively recently. And then of course, very recently, how much uh, the, the franchise of Star Wars uh, has has grown. Uh, so I want to kind of show off these two machines side by side uh, just because of their somewhat um, unique but similar uh, history. Uh, so and, and what's great about Star Wars, we've had Tron for a while, but what's so great about Star Wars is this specific, the Atari Star Wars from 1983, uh, is considered to be kind of an ungettable great game. Uh, it's it's um, a lot of people's holy grail. So for us to have one of these and especially in the beautiful condition that it is, is very exciting. So uh, you guys come in and play both of these games. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of information on both games that I'm, I'm hoping that you will enjoy because uh, again they have a little bit of a, of a similar past. So in the case of Tron, Tron was, re was released in 1982 technically but in reality it was actually 1981. The movie was released in 1982. So this is a collaboration between uh, Bally's, Midway, and uh, Walt Disney uh, Productions. So other than the, the sequels of the games that uh, Tron, uh, uh, of Tron, Walt Disney, this is the only degree that they actually were involved in, um, in, uh, in the video game industry. So, um, sorry, we just got a delivery, so I got, I got distracted there. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, 19, uh, and, and just to show you, so right here it says uh, 1981, but down here on the control panel, it says 1982. So one of the unique things that happened with Tron is th the game was released and designed before the movie. So the game designers that created this video game had no idea what the, what the movie was gonna be about. They really kind of only told them, hey, there's gonna be this light cycle race. So in Tron, if you've ever played it before, there's a, a couple options to play. Um, but after you've seen the movie, there's, there's really only one or two parts that are actually even somewhat relevant to, to what was in the movie. Uh, so a very unique aspect of, of releasing the game first, uh, then releasing the movie. Now the movie Tron uh, by Disney was, had a ton of controversy around it. And the movie actually did not do very good. It didn't become a cult classic until much later on. Uh, and part of the reason why is because you had Walt Disney was beginning to shift from using hand-drawn animations to computer animations. And computer animations were seen as being kind of the, uh, the black sheep of the, uh, of the art world. Uh, computer art was not art, it was not, it was not welcome. Uh, so many of the people at Disney's were boycotting uh, this movie or going on strike and various problems. Uh, so the movie was hit with a lot of controversy, which in a, in a lot of cases makes the movie more popular. But generally speaking, the movie was a total flop. Um, it did not make anywhere near the money that it, that it was supposed to. Uh, that said, this video game actually grossed about $80 million in sales. Uh, so the video game actually outpaced the movie significantly. Uh, so that's one of those unique aspects. So now you have, there you have the story of Tron. This story is very different. <laughs> so again, uh, this game was released in 1983, so shortly after Tron came out, and, uh, or Tron the video game came out. And, uh, but it's based on the 1977 movie, uh, A New Hope. Uh, so with, with Star Wars, you, the game is very simple. In Tron, you have kind of four different sequences to play uh, that are references to the movie, again, loosely for the case of two of the scenes and pretty accurately for the other two. Light Cycles is really the only major one. Um, but this game really only plays out one scene in the movie uh, from 1977 and it's when Luke is flying in in his X-Wing uh, to to shoot to blow up the Death Star to shoot that the tiny exhaust port uh, no bigger than the size of a Womp Rats right uh, so literally that that's it that's the whole game uh, is you blow up a kind of couple TIE fighters you approach the you approach the Death Star you time that shot just right and you're good that's the whole game it's over uh, so you can choose like easy medium and hard on how aggressive the enemies are going to be 
but it's a great game. It's such a great game. It has a very unique control to it. Speaking of Holy Grails, is this control system here. Uh, it was very unique for that time. This only shows up in a couple other games. Uh, and also one, one unique thing too is uh, it is a color vector graphics monitor. Uh, so that's a, that's a very unique uh, type. Not, not a lot of games use that, um, but rather than using, um, you know, a CRT or, or a, like a pixel, uh, it, it uses lines instead and colored lines. Uh, if you ever played the game Tempest, it has the same type of, same type of monitor to it. Uh, it kind of gives that, um, uh, it was the first kind of stab at making a 3D effect, uh, which you could easily do with lines. So very unique game. You truly do feel like it's a 3D experience as you're flying into the Death Star uh, to pull off that, that perfectly timed and aim shot by using the Force. <laughs> so anyways, come play both these games. We've got them sitting together today. Uh, I'll do a walkthrough. Generally speaking here at RK92, we have a little over 100 games. Um, we swap stuff out on a pretty, pretty regular basis, but there's always 100 games, if not a couple more, here at the arcade. It's $12 per person. All the machines are set to free play, uh, so you can we give you a wristband at the door, you stick around, you play as long as you want to, uh, and, and play through these games. You know, again, Star Wars is a, is a short game, uh, but there's other games like, uh, like Dragon's Lair and like, um, uh, you know, Tempest, Super Mario Bros. The, the games that are like long, it takes you like 45 minutes to play through or longer. Um, so, you know, those are some 80s classics where you're not popping in a quarter hit and continue. Um, we have a ton of 90s games, you know, we love the 90s. Arcade 92 is a reference to uh, the sequence of events that happened in 1992 that gave us the multi-billion dollar industry that we have today. Uh, so we have like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We have The Simpsons, X-Men, Sunset Riders. All these games where you, you probably, if you were a kid or a young adult in the 90s, you pumped so many quarters into them, you don't need to do that now. So you can play through and experience the entire game when most of us only played like level one or level two. You can beat it, so bring some friends, play TMNT, play through the whole dang thing uh, and, and, and enjoy it in, in a whole new fresh way. So of course we have a full bar kitchen as well, tons, we got about a dozen beers on tap, about 30 to 40 rotating uh, package beers, uh, ciders, wines, we have 18 signature gaming themed cocktails. Um, Let's see what else, the food. So we have gaming themed food as well. Tons of pizzas, burgers, your kind of typical bar food. Um, we've got some good stuff. We're actually pretty dang good for, for an arcade. I think you're gonna be impressed uh, with, with, with the food that, that we have. So anyways, we're located here in the historic downtown McKinney, Texas, uh, right at the uh, intersection of Highway 5 and Virginia. Um, and it's, it's, we exist to remind adults to make time to play. Our slogan is it's time to play again. Uh, we're all about a multi-generational experience, so we have games like Space Invaders uh, that was released 40 years ago, but we also have games from the 80s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. We've got pinball here, and we also have modern eSports lounge as well. So it's a, it's, it's a fun experience for all generations. We are built for adult, but we are family friendly. Uh, on Saturday nights after 9 p.m., it is 18 and up only though, but all other days don't have any age restrictions. So uh, bring the family, relive uh, this time, come hang out as a guy's night, ladies' night. Um, what, how, any, you could use any excuse. <laughs> any excuse is good uh, to come uh, to play 100 plus retro games and, uh, and, and relive such an amazing, amazing time in the gaming history. So thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, again, a walkthrough is coming soon. I just, I, I wanted to do it today, but I want to wait because we're actually about to swap out a couple and I want you to see some cool new stuff that we have coming in here at Arcade 92.